Welcome back, everyone. Week 11 of the ELF. Let's go. We doing everything they talk about. You know I'm everything a boss about. Not putting work and gotta toss them out. I'm really biting, they just barking out. I'm really riding, they just parking now. His street, what to talk about. See the big H when I'm walking out. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Base Coverage presented to you by our partners over at KNOWA Teamwear. I'm your host, Jamal Clay, and we made it to week 11. We got past the bye week. Everyone was on vacation doing what they had to do, holidays as some people may call it. Uh, but now we're back to the grind. Now we're back to making this final push and see who's going to uh, be the uh, four teams into the playoffs and push to get to the, the clang and fork for the championship. So uh, a lot on the plate today. We're going to break down games. We got – Running backs coach slash special teams coordinator from the Barcelona Dragons, Pat Winnen, joining uh, the show to chop it up. And then uh, we make our picks and we have our, uh, our guest picker uh, this week, Mr. Daniel Ducal, who is the international scout covering, you know, ELF, CFL, um, and a couple other leagues out there. So uh, I won't waste too much more of your time. Uh, we'll get to our interview with Pat right after this quick break from our partners over at KNOA Teamwear. everyone today we have a running backs coach slash special teams coordinator for the barcelona dragons mr pat winning coming to chop us up and uh, and talk some ball so pat what's going on brother how you doing man Hi, man thank you appreciate you having me man well definitely man how uh how things going uh after the bye week how things going over there good good you know it was good to uh step away get away from everything a little bit mid-season and and we're ready to rock and ready to roll. You know, uh, we had a little bit, we had an extra practice this week just to get our bodies moving, flowing again. And we're just ready to hit the field. Well, let's dive right into it, man. And, you know, you're someone that's been with the team since, you know, last year. Um, this year, new coach coming in um, after a rough season last year, you know, started off pretty slow. You guys picked it up a little bit during the, during the, the middle of the season. Almost made a playoff push um, for ultimately – you know, the season ended. Uh, but for you personally, you know, the, the one question I want to know is, you know, why did you come back after last season? Right. Um, a couple of different things, man. Uh, you know, first of all, it's just, it's the players, you know, the bond that we created, the, the things we went through, the, the trials and tribulations that we went through last year, you know, really created that family atmosphere here in the organization and with the players. And it, it was it was mainly for them. Also, the league, the league is growing and a little bit of FOMO. Didn't want to miss out <laughs> on all the fun. Uh, definitely had to play with it, but also but mostly the players. And then Coach Andrew actually called me. You know, I, I had another I, I got a job for a college over in the States. Yeah. And Coach Andrew called me and he's like, hey, look, the Barcelona Dragons are reaching out. And I guess he found my name off Twitter or something. And he's like, what do you think? And then I started talking to him and chopping it up with him a little bit. And I was like, man, I got to go with this guy. I got to go. So I, I, you know, I messaged me and Bart talked a little bit back and forth. And, and before you know it, I was back here. And, and it was, you know, the players, Coach Andrew, his experience, the way he, he, his passion, the way he watches the game and calls plays for me it was just another opportunity to learn from one of yeah. the better coaches and and be part of something special here I knew a couple of the guys that were coming back and some of the guys we were adding and I knew that with the right pieces we could definitely make something work so it was it was really a no-brainer once all that started rolling and after that it just kind of took off a little bit yeah it's crazy because you bring in a new coach but coach Andrew embraces Barcelona embraces the team he has, the fans he has, and he's very engaging. And he's get and you could you could feel that watching from the outside. You could feel that you know when fans are at the game, and it feeds into that that culture you have down there. I think he was hindsight twenty twenty. I think he was a perfect fit for you guys. Um, right. Yeah. No. I definitely. I you know he, one of the best things that he's ever said that I've always kind of fallen under through some of the, my other head coaches that you know you lead from the middle here. You know this is more of a it's it's different than than coaching in the states. You know, you, you want to let your players take control, not take control, but, but be their own person, be their own personality. 
Yeah. And the moment you take it away from them, we're no longer a team. We're just a couple guys playing football. Yeah. So Coach Candy does a great job of just, you know, letting these guys be themselves. And you see it with the way we play, the way we practice. Every, everyone's kind of their, their own – they're having fun now. <laughs> you know, last year was a little bit more, little bit more rigged, a little bit more structured yeah. in the sense of, like, old-school football. And that's really changed. And, and Coach Andrews done a great job, and we're learning a ton from him. So, so it's exciting stuff. Yeah, I definitely think that style fits, you know, the players and, you know, the guys you have down there. So, um, so we're at week 11. Uh, we're sitting here at, at six and two. Currently, you guys are at the three seed, but first in the South. Uh, now, last year, again, completely different team. Uh, you you kind of had a front row seat of being able to see from last year and this year, right? As it relates to you as a coach, you know, what did you learn personally about you or how did you grow uh, as a coach from year one to year two right now? Ooh, well, definitely uh... – you know, I had to step, you know, we lost a couple of coaches midseason last year and I had to step up into the offensive coordinator and special teams. And, and you know, it was all kind of like, it all just meshes up into a blur what happened at the end of the season last year. You know, we are coaching, it was, it, was, it was four of us. It was five of us. It was five of us coaching last year yeah. when we made that little push at the end. It was, it was extreme trust on the players to, you know, we're going through, through the pandemic stuff. We're, we're understaffed. So, so for me, it was more like you have to be prepared with everything and do your homework. And just if it takes more time of your day, then it takes more time. But being prepared, just consistently, you know, repetition, 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 mm -hmm. practice, film. It's, it's a grind. It's a grind. So then coming into this year, it was like, OK, now the players, I think all of us, I like, kind of took that step as 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 players and coaches yeah that return you saw it you saw the difference like you know last year was like oh this is exciting it's fun you know we're playing pro ball and then now this year we all came into training camp like ready to go you know yeah. like the players the players were working out they weren't on the beach they were getting ready for the <laughs> season compared to just stumbling into the season last year yeah and, and, and that, has, that has something to do with you know we started late everything kind of came together late and people, you know, we're still figuring out how to do everything. But that to me, the biggest difference is the preparation of everything. And I think last year you're, yeah, you're recruiting guys, but guys are coming from one league to another. So they don't really right. have an off season where they did, you know, this year to get ready and you guys, right. are, you know, everyone's gone through it, but you, you can see that like if when teams are dedicated with teams, when players are dedicated to, you know, you know, Playing in, playing in one league or playing for one team and they have an all season to prepare for that league, the success that you guys are being able to, to come out with. So, um, right. So, yeah, that's, was, that's, that's, it's, it's, it, it plays such a factor into every, and it just, you know, preparing your body. It's, a, and it's a longer yeah. season than last year. It's, it's, yeah. it's a grind. It's a, you're talking about 16 weeks, basically. Yeah. If, if, if you reach the end, you're playing 16 to 17 weeks. Yeah. Absolutely. NFL season. Yeah, and yeah, we're, we're granted that you know every team is getting two buys, but as this league continues to grow, you know right. they're not gonna they're not gonna keep extending weeks. If anything, they're just gonna take out a bye week or something like that. Depends how everybody right. decide to do it. But that's a that's a whole nother. Uh, topic yeah, can we get to talk about that for the third hour? Or well, yeah, exactly. Whatever, whatever Zume wants to wants to wants to right. uh, come up with his crazy mind when it comes to that. Um, but hey, man, and the word in the streets and this social media uh, metaverse, you know, talking to everybody that watches the games and, you know, covers the games or even just people that I mean, you just like to, you know, chop it up with guys and stuff like that. Um, as a special teams coordinator, you kind of have the privilege of combining, you know, the offensive guys and defensive guys into one unit and you know, everyone that's watched you guys compliments you guys on being able to play in all three phases and all three phases have helped you uh, win games. Obviously, you know, the 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 first round game was big and you, you guys had a couple other games, too, where special teams had come into play. Um, and it's hard for you because, you know, I, I mean, we play ball. Some guys just don't want to play special teams. Nobody wants to run down on, on Gunner or be a frontline kick returner. But for you, how did you get those guys to buy in and to contribute to the success that you guys have been able to have on special teams? 
Right. Well, I mean, first of all, like you said, it becomes one unit. So the offensive guys, the defensive guys, when we're in those meetings, when we're in practice, special teams becomes one unit. So that's like the biggest thing that we, you know, we take pride in. Uh, I also have some guys that are just freaking awesome. You know, Georgia, <laughs> Luis Cerceda, Pep is our long snapper, Bowen. Those guys, you know, the George is a professional kicker. He's in the league yeah. for a couple of years. So, so just bouncing off ideas with him has made it awesome. And then the biggest thing is just taking pride in it, like I said, you know, from the start. And, that, and it starts with my meetings, but it's really the guys. You know, the guys, they, they love it. They love, like, we got a special bunch of dudes that just love playing ball. So, so like, I've had multiple starters come up to me, like, like coach, like, I want to be on kickoff. I want to be on kick return. I want to yeah. be on power. And I'm thinking the same thing you, like, when I play it, I don't want to be on any of that. No. No, you know, I'm, I'm in on running back receiver. I wanted, I, I don't want to be on special teams, but these guys want to be on it. And I think that, you know, that has something to do with, with the way we've structured it, the way we've talked about it since our zoom meetings before I came overseas. I think everything we just, we just said, a, 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 it's it, cause we know we're the smallest team in the league. Yeah. We're not as big as the Germans and we're not as big as Austrians. So we have to execute in everything we do. And that yeah. means special teams. And that means that Coach Andrew's awesome. He, he, he says, hey, take all the time you need for us to get ready. Because he, he understands. He understands that it's 33% of the game. And it's yeah. just as big as part of it. Just as, as important as offense and defense, yep. And so we can't, we can't, we can't, we're not, we're, we're not allowed to just take, <laughs> take it lax and just yeah. put 11 guys on the field. And, and after that, it's just the guys making plays. You know, essentially, we just put them in position and they make the plays. Yeah, and like I said, it's been fun. It's been fun watching you guys. I mean, not just you know watching Zach on offense or you know Kyle Sweet salsa dance or not just watching you know. Uh, him, though, he's got to he's got to work on his elbows. We're gonna hit some. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or, or not just uh, you know watching you know Jordy you know uh, on defense or you know Michael Sam get after the quarterback or on or uh, 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 Rubia. Yeah. Um, Special teams is an important part, but by but having guys bought into it might be might be the probably the most challenging part. But once you guys guys that want to right. volunteer and do it, it just makes it just makes your life easier. And obviously, you've seen how you, you guys have had success with it throughout the season. So, um, I want to transition to uh, Michael Sam a little bit. So this past week, ESPN released a documentary, his story, <laughs> right. uh, and how he got to the point um, he is today. Um, as a Rams fan, I was happy when they drafted him. Um, and he's more than just, I want to get this out the way. Michael Sam is more than just an incredible story. He's a, he's a trailblazer, but he's also, you know, a heck of a football player. Um, Co-defensive player uh, in the, in the SEC, which is the toughest conference in, in the NCAA, you know, him coming over as a coach now as a player, what's been his, what's been his impact? Or what type of leadership has he been able to provide, not only to the team, um, but as a contributor to the coaching staff? Right. Yeah. So, so Mike, Mike came in, you know, as an assistant D line coach, and yeah, I think at first, just like all of us, he was trying to find find his role. You know, this that was kind of his first time in a coach setting. Yeah. And, and overseas, it, it's not, it's not, it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy doing what he did, and then. And then we, you know, with a couple of the roster moves that we made, we're like, hey, Mike, are you interested in playing? And that's a whole nother animal. You know, yeah. the guy, the, he was already in shape. Yeah. It's like, it's coming in from not playing a couple of years to not playing pro ball overseas. So that transaction, that, that, that change alone is an inspiration to all of us. Yeah. And, and then you could see he was always cool with the guy. So, you know, as a coach, I feel like a lot of us are more player coaches. You know, the guys, we, we get along with the guys well. And he, you know, he jumped in and did that. And then he became a player. And just the impact he has, you know, his mindset towards how he handles himself in practice, how he prepares himself for the game, the stuff he does. You know, he's out there before on the bags, before we're even in pre-practice. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a pre-practice before a pre-practice. <laughs> and I think that helps, you know, a couple of the younger guys that we have were a young team see that and want to do that with him and want to want to get better with him and coach chase who's our d-line coach you know has four years of, of uh, experience in nfl with the vikings 
that's I mean, you got two NFL minds right there yeah. helping Yago and, and Rubia, who you're seeing is having an incredible season. Yeah. Those are two guys right there that deserve all the credit for helping mold this from a kid, a Spanish, a Spanish football player to this one of the stars in the league, a young yeah. star in the league. And so Mike, you know, Mike's mindset is just it's a professional mindset. It's it's a, it's an intense mindset. It's it's what can I do to make the team better? How can I make it better? Not just on the field, but off the field. Yeah. You know, how can we help sell merchandise? It, it, it's it's inspiring because he's been through so much. He's he's seen so much, so yeah, much more than any of us have ever seen. He's, and, probably, uh, he's probably seen the the highest highs. And right. Probably some of the probably the lowest lows for someone who has been in his position. Um, right. But I don't want to take away from. Uh, I'm not saying you are, just generally speaking, like when people think of Mike Sam, like don't take away from his story. Like, no, like this dude is a, a great football player uh, and the impact he's had on that defense and that defensive line has been, has been great. I mean, he's opening, he's opening up, you know, right. for other guys to make plays. Right. That's another thing that, and, and you know how it is. Like, yeah. the like never, they never get enough credit. They never get enough credit. And, and what he does, the way he could fill a gap, the way he could, now two guys have to worry about him. That opens up three v three. You know, it, it 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 changes the way we scheme. It changes the way offenses have to scheme, and that alone, right there, is enough for what we need. No, so you, see, you, see it. you see that strength. You see that strength, and it's slowly the 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 crazy thing is he's still not where he where he was. Yeah, he's still like working his way up to his football shape. So we're you know as a coaching staff, we're excited. We're excited to see how much farther he can go. Yeah, he had a little scare in uh, in Turkey, but it was good to see him bounce back. Right. Uh, when, right. uh, I don't know, definitely, definitely, and and that's part of that's part of yeah. getting back into that shit. And it was hot. It was hot. <laughs> they, got us, they got us on the other side without the shade. It was. I was. I was like, okay, they, they know what they're doing. <laughs> this, down there. this this Turkish heat's a little different than the Spain heat. It is. It is. It's a drier heat. So it was just. We were all. We were all over the. Place. <laughs> we're, not here, we're not here to talk about that game. <laughs> nah, 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 that that game was in the past. But um, hey, man. Uh, before we wrap it up, so this is the final stretch. Last four weeks in the season, right? Obviously, you know <laughs> what it is. You guys are in a. You guys are in a decent spot. You know to uh to get to where you want to go. But I want to ask you within these next four weeks, what do the Dragons have to do to not only ensure you're a playoff contender, because I think, you know, again, everybody in this social media metaverse thinks that, but you guys are a championship caliber contender. Right. We just have to, you know, we can't let the outside noise affect us. We yeah. got to keep doing what we do best. And that's being us. That's being us and, and preparing the way we prepare, practicing the way we practice and playing the way we play. You know, we're a fun team. We're excited. Absolutely. We're, we're, Absolutely. You know, we love doing all that stuff and that's great, but we can't let, anything outside of us create this other world that we're not, that's not, that's not going to get us better. What's going to get us better is staying within ourselves, staying as a team, staying as a family, and then just taking game by game. And I know, I know that's like corny, you know, typical answer, but it's so true. It's so true. The truth. In, this yeah, league, it's the truth. in this league more than ever. And we've seen it. You saw it two weeks against uh, two weeks ago against us. If yeah. you don't take a team 100% like a professional team, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get beat. You're gonna get beat, and, and that's 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 just the bottom line of this league. So for us, it's take each game by the game, and let everything else play out, and don't let the outside noise affect us. Because we got something special here. Everyone yeah. sees it, but we just have to stay within ourselves and let everything else, you know, stumble into where it happens. Absolutely, man. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, Pat Wynn, running backs coach, special teams uh, coordinator for the Barcelona Dragons, currently number one in the South, 6-2 and two record, heading into this weekend slate versus the Cologne Centurions. Pat, hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. It's always good to, to chop it up with not just players, but coaches and you know, different minds as well. So I appreciate you coming on, man. No, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that interview we had with Pat. Uh, it was good to chop it up with him. Uh, let's get into the games this weekend and uh, and talk some ball. So uh, first thing we got, the Barcelona Dragons versus the uh, Cologne Centurions. I mean, I don't even know where to start for Cologne because I don't even know if Jan Reich is playing quarterback. Um, he had a bye week. Hopefully uh, he's all healthy and, and good to go. But if not, 
looks like we'll, we'll be seeing some more of the uh, the the lefty version of Quentin Pounds. Uh, Clone, they found a good sign again, uh, Joshua Mack, who I also want to give a shout out to. He is a former alumni from the University of Maine. Uh, so go Black Bears. Uh, it was good to see him in the league and actually have a pretty good performance his first outing. So we'll see with a, a week under his belt how he performs. Um, in order to, to be honest, in order to beat Barcelona, you gotta uh, you need physicality up front with Cologne. Um, they're just a walking wounded team right now. I don't know if they're gonna have enough to to beat the Dragons. And with these two teams, uh, it came down to a, a fourth down stop by the Dragons and a bad ball, which you know, ultimately changed the season for Cologne. They haven't been right since. Um, so I'm just going to keep it simple. I think Barcelona goes to Cologne. Uh, they take care of business. I, I think Cologne, you know, obviously you got talent at the skill position on offense, but you're injured up front. I don't even know who's that quarterback. Um, there's just too many factors. So uh, I'm going to take the, the Barcelona Dragons to beat the Cologne Centurions. Next thing we got, Ryan Fire versus the Istanbul Rams. The Fire traveled down to Turkey. Uh, to visit the the new Rams down there with Isaiah Green and them boys. Uh, last uh, two games have shown me this uh, Rams team can compete with the best of them in the league. Um, you know, obviously beating uh, Barcelona, but also going toe to toe with the Hamburg Sea Devils, uh, which is probably a wake up call for for them. But ultimately, this team is a lot different than their first couple uh, games that they played under the, the new imports. Um, if I'm being honest, I think the Fire are on upset alert this week. I think they traveled Turkey. They've been one and three in their last four games, uh, and they really have to, you know, turn the tide if they're going to make this playoff push. If, if the Fire loses weekend, I think it's pretty much over, unless something drastic happens between, you know, Berlin or uh, – or, uh, Brilliant, the Raiders or or Frankfurt. So uh, the fire need this um, more than ever. Um, Isaiah Green, uh, more of a mobile quarterback than Jared uh, Stegman was. He's going to be able to contribute in that run game that they weren't able to get going last time they played. Um, but, also, but also their defense was put in very compromised positions and they were playing from behind. So they really didn't really get anything going. My only concern is the Ryan Fire skill position versus the Istanbul secondary because I think that is a Mitch Max um, uh, for for the Rams and I do think um, JJ Clark also provides a different element where if those guys are open he can use his legs uh, so it's going to make things interesting but hey I'm going with it I think the Rams are going to be able to pull this off I've seen how they played the last two games um, and to be honest they might be playing better than the Fire right now. Um, at this point in the season. So um, I think I think the Rams are going to pull this one off and beat the Ryan Fire. So I'm, I'm picking instant both for this game. Here we go. Leipzig Kings versus the Hamburg Sea Devils. You know, a lot of questions in this game. You know, are the, are the Kings done? How do the Sea Devils bounce back from their win over the, uh, the Rams? What's the health of running back? Uh, and MVP candidate, to be honest, uh, Glenn Tunga. There's a lot of questions uh, going into this game. Both teams um, – Last time they played at under 100 uh, yards passing. Um, I'd probably say both quarterbacks were equal in that game in terms of, you know, you know, skill set. Um, Leipzig has since signed uh, uh, Connor Miller, who in his, you know, two games, uh, his touchdown to interception radio was six to one. Um, so I, so he's a quarterback who's not going to turn the ball over, which has killed the Kings this season. Um, I think, Hamburg is the better team, no doubt about it. I just don't know at this point the mental of the the Kings, who they are, and what they're going to do. I know AJ Tavares um, and JP, and you know those guys. They're going to they're going to come out uh, playing hard and stuff like that. But ultimately, I think the uh, I think the I think Hamburg is a better team. I think they're going to win this, and I think their win against the Ram was a wake up call, and you know it's going to propel them these next four uh, games. Uh, into the final season. So I'm picking the Sea Devils uh, to beat the Leipzig Kings. Next we have Berlin Thunder travel to good old Poland and play the Russell Panthers. Hey, listen, it was a rough, it's a rough, uh, it was a rough game for the Panthers uh, the last outing um, or last week versus the Frankfurt Galaxy. Um, you can't lead by halftime and then lose by a touchdown to a team you're trying to pass to get into the playoffs, um, especially, you know, at home where you need every game going forward. And they're in a similar boat with the fire, you know, one more loss could, you know, technically, you know, they, they could be out of it. Um, biggest question, how will the Panthers offensive line protect uh, uh, 
against the, the Berlin defense line. Uh, Kyle Kitchen and those boys, last time they played, had four sacks. And this Berlin defense is hot. You know, they're playing very well right now. They're peaking at the right time. So my biggest concern is going to be that defense line for the Thunder going up against the Panthers offensive line. Um, one of the keys to the game is going to be the Panthers secondary versus Joe Germanario and Robin uh, Wilczek. In the last four games, Robin is probably the – Robin, you can argue Robin is the best receiver in the league in the in the last uh, three or four games. You know, 13 catches, 426 yards, and four touchdowns. And he's averaging 32 yards a catch, you know, with Joe. So him and Joe have a special connection. Um, I think Darius Robinson has his best game uh, this week going up against Robin. And I think that secondary play well against the Panthers. I'm picking the Panthers to beat uh, the Berlin Thunder this week. And I think this is going to be a jump start. So hopefully get them back on track uh, or make a final playoff push. Uh, but I think, I think, uh, I think, I, I don't think they lose another home game uh, with Berlin uh, coming in this week at home. Uh, here we go. The end of Vikings versus the Frankfurt galaxy. If Frankfurt is going to make any type of playoff push, these next three weeks are crucial. They got Vienna, they got the fire and they got the Raiders which is a rough stretch, but you need all of those games if you're going to make a playoff push for Frankfurt. Um, last time these two teams played, Jacob Sullivan was out. Um, it was the heartbeat of that team. Um, he led them to a game-winning drive against the Panthers last week, and as you can see, his impact to the team, but also the Galaxy didn't have a um, a Reese Horn uh, a receiver, another outside threat, outside threat to, uh, to contribute to the offense. Uh, Galaxy defense actually – uh, they, they were putting some bad spots, but they actually didn't play too, too well. Um, if it wasn't for a block punt uh, return for a touchdown, it, it was a it was a one touch. It was a one score game uh, leading in the half last time they played the Vikings. Uh, this is going to be a really good game. Uh, I think Frankfurt needs this game, but the Vikings want this game just as much because if they win this game, they basically clinch the conference and secure their playoff spot uh, by winning the Central if they beat the Galaxy this week. So, um I think that's going to solidify a playoff spot. I do think this is going to be a, a great game, a hell of a game, but uh, I'm picking the Vienna Vikings to uh, beat the Frankfurt Galaxy in this game. Last but not least, uh, I'm going to keep this short. I can't see an upset uh, against the Raiders right now. Raiders are 3-1 at home. They're one of the best uh, teams playing at home um, in, the, in the league. Um, however, I am interested to see the, the, the dynamic between Dante Van Dieven, Jalen Conwell, and now uh, – Phyllis Pasqualini, who they just signed before the uh, before the transaction deadline. I'm interested to see that dynamic. I believe Jalen, you know, will get running back, but also will get slot reps, maybe some jet sweeps, maybe some bubbles, because um, you also have uh, Phyllis as an option too. So that's going to give them multiple threats. But like I said, I'm going to keep this short. I don't think the surge go to uh, Innsbruck and beat the Raiders. So my pick for this game, I'm going to pick the Raiders. Right. Guest picker this week, I have Mr. Daniel Ducal. He's an international scout, covers ELF, CFL, and multiple other leagues uh, uh, internationally. Um, his picks for this game, he has uh, Barcelona Dragons beating the Cologne. He has the Ryan Fire uh, beating the um, beating the Istanbul Rams. So we go head-to-head -head there. He has the Berlin Thunder beating the Russell Panthers. We go head-to-head -head there. And then we're locked up with Vienna, Hamburg, and, Ra and the Raiders. So uh, these are his picks. Uh, again, you know, don't forget to not only subscribe to the channel, follow K Noah Teamwear on, um, on Instagram, follow Athletes Forum on Instagram. And if we win or tie, we always uh, give the tie to the, to, the, uh, to the fans. So win or tie, you get an opportunity to win some free gear, which will be announced uh, in, the, in the recap episode. So. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Week 11, final stretch of the ELF. Man, we, we're going to see some separation here soon. And we're going to see, you know, how how teams are going to position themselves going into the playoffs. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This won't be the, the last time we chop it up. Everybody,